Can you see the angle I've settled on for the roof? Which is, uh, it doesn't need to be very steep because I'm going to do it with roofing felt. If it was slate or something, then you'd have to be, I think slate's a minimum of 22 degrees, something like that. Um, but because it's going to be essentially a flat roof, really, it doesn't need to be very steep. So as it turns out, this is about six degrees. And obviously the higher I went at the center on the ridge, the lower these timbers would end up over the, over the top of the sort of veranda area. So I wanted to make sure that stayed up. So the higher I have that, then the shallower the pitch. So six degrees is what it's worked out at. Uh, basically, I, I left that central stud high, as you can see up there. This stud here, that's higher than it needs to be. That gave me just a chance to clamp this outside rafter to it and rest it on this corner. So I clamped it here, rested it on this corner here, just so I could see what kind of angle I would get and uh, once I was happy with that angle, I cut that rafter into place. And once that was in place, I, was, I then put a, a block, if you can see it in there, I put a block on the inside of that upright to rest the ridge on, which is running off across the top of the roof that way. So that's how I set it up. It's, you know, it's not gotta be um, a specific angle whatsoever. So you can just get up there and make it work with what you've got. So I'm just going to run through cutting one of the rafters. It's very simple. So I've set the saw, I've set the saw up to six degrees. You see that there, zero, that's five degrees. I've set it to six degrees. So I'll cut my uh, plum cut on, on this end. Then we measure down in this instance, it's one, nine, four, five millimeters. We'll mark that. That's the position for the, what we call the bird's mouth, which will be the little angle that's cut out the bottom that sits over the, sits over the plate at this point here. And the overall length from the, from the top of that cut, which will be the piece that meets the ridge, down to this end is 2100, 2.1 meters. So that's what I'm gonna go through, show you how I do that. That's why we're simply cutting the angle on this end. That's what's known as the plum cut. So that's the six degrees and that will be the, that will be what will go to the center of the roof. I'm going to measure, I'm going to put two marks on this timber now. The first one will be on this top edge and it will be 1945. Is that mark there? And then another one at 2.1, 2100 millimetres. I'll try and get you in close enough to show you what I'm doing here. All right. So this is my roofing square. So I need an out of 60 degree angle on there. So I'm gonna swing it round, I'm gonna sit this point on the edge of the rafter and then go swing it round until this edge lines up with that mark there. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six degrees. Move that so you can see. There we go. Line it up with that mark, the full, uh, 1435. 1935, sorry. Put that line through there. Now, this timber that I've got from that we've milled, some of it it's it's not regularized, so some of it's a little bit bigger than others. So when I cut out this little notch at the bottom to sit on top of the plate, 
if I cut them all to the same depth, then because the timbers are slightly different, you'll get a different height amongst all the different timbers that get sat on. So what is important to do in this instance is that you measure how much you leave on rather than what you cut off. So in this instance, I'm leaving, it's a very small cutout I'm doing. Normally you'd cut a third and leave two thirds on. But in this instance, I'm leaving 80 millimeters on. 80. So when I cut that out and that sits down on the plate, you'll see in a second, that every joist, no matter what thickness it is right the way across, there's 80 mil left there. So they'll all be sitting 80 mil above the plate. So now I need a straight, uh, a square line from there. So I'll just line that up. and mark that through. Also put a, put a square line down there for when I cut it by hand in a moment. So to begin with, I'm just gonna cut along that with a circular saw. This wood's still quite wet. I mean, it was only milled. It was only milled a few days ago, so it's still pretty wet. Uh, so it's uh, the old circular saw struggle a little bit. So now, just going to cut down this line, square across the face, but at the six-degree angle that I've marked on the face that you can't see at the moment. And then. just a case of putting the, the handsaw into the slot that was made by the circular saw, finishing off the cut. And of course there's a knot in the way, always is, right at the end of the cut. There we go. So all that's left to do now is to get a roofing square again. And on our other 2.1 meter mark, as you can see here, is to, to do our, uh, our six degree angle again. So that's, uh, that's there. And I'm just gonna Spin that round and cut to length. As long as you've still got the still got the angle set up, the 6 degree angle set up on the saw. So there it is. That'll, if that's the plate. On the top of the stud work, that will sit. That will sit on there like that, at the 6 degree angle, and at the angle at the other end, we'll just meet the ridge. So uh, once I've cut a few more, I'll put a couple up, and you can see that. Happening. So I'm going to mark my centre line from out there. there we go. So that's the position. And you can see that that angle, yeah, hopefully you can see that. This angle up here is nice and tight. Of course, not enough nails in the nail gun. I'm glad I put some in my tool belt. There we go. 
just hold it up level on the top. There you go, it's that one. I'll do this one. I'll do two while I'm up here. Here we go. So that's the top end, that's, uh, so this is your plumb cut, and this is your ridge. So now we just go back down to the, these are the ones that are already up. So now we go back to here, and nail those on, which I'll do from the ladder. It was a little bit precarious, so clambering around on a, caravan roof because they're not the sturdiest of structures you have to make sure you're kneeling in the right place on the ribs uh, just hold that in place get that nice and tight up against the plate and that's that one hopefully you saw that So there you see how, how that angle sits on there. And this leaves me with my 80 millimeters from there to there that I was talking about earlier. A plum cut at the top, bird's mouth as we call it at the bottom here. And this, this point is the 2.1 meters from the top of the ridge. So uh, fix and repeat, I think there's about 18 or 19 on each side they've got to go on on the far side though where the veranda is I do exactly the same thing cut out the bird's mouth but I leave these long they'll be about 3.7 meters and I'll leave them long they'll go past the upright posts then I'll fix them into the sides of those posts and cut them off to the desired length afterwards so for now I'm just going to cut some some more that will go on this side um, as you can see the ridge at the moment is propped up on two blocks um, There's the block I was talking about earlier On top of the stud that I've left long that will get cut off flush at some point So this ridge here that runs through is sitting on top of a block there and at the moment it's temporarily sitting on that Obviously, I haven't got a ridge long enough to do the entire building So the, the bridges the, the, the ridges will be joined together. So I've, I've got an angle on that one and I'll cut a corresponding angle on the next one then I'll bolt them through and then I'll probably end up with three three ridges bolted together along here again it's it's just a caravan you know we haven't got to go crazy um, it's just gonna be a flat roof nobody's gonna be getting up here so and the only other thing that I'm gonna put on here is I'm gonna it's not a lot of room but I'm gonna put some collars which is a timber that would that will bolt to the side of the raft to this side, go under the ridge and bolt to the other side. And what that will do is it will stop the roof from spreading out. Because if you put any weight down, what it wants to do is push this end out. So, and because, because this stud work isn't attached in any way to the side of the caravan, it's only attached at the bottom. We need to make sure that the roof can't spread out at the top. Otherwise it will it'll push push this wall out that way and the, the other side it will push out that way just through the weight coming down through this triangle that the roof rafters create so that will just be a timber like I say from here to a corresponding point on the other side underneath the ridge just to stop that spreading out they're called collars <laughs> Hi folks, it's uh, now the 6th of April and welcome to part two of the caravan makeover. Thanks for all your questions and interest in the previous video. Um, the stage I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the roof boarded out, insulated, 
and waterproofed. And once that's done, then we'll be looking at insulating the, the walls, vapor barrier, and cladding. So, I'll show you what, how I've started laying. Show you how I've started laying out the roof. Now, over this kind of distance, 37 feet, even, you know, running boards in one long line, even when you butt them up on their ends, they can end up wandering a little bit. So, you see I've run a string line from one end to the other, essentially a chalk line, and I've measured up four foot, which is the size of the board, from the edge of the rafter, up that last, up that last rafter, I've got marked four foot. Same at the other end, and then I've pinged a line, pinged a chalk line, so now I've got, can't see it, it's so bright in the sun. There you go, there's a blue line, like that on each of the rafters. So now I can, run my boards along there and obviously I'm going to have to stuff each section with wool as I go because you won't get it in afterwards especially here now because I've had to follow if you remember right at the beginning I fixed all of my supports to the steel girders that are underneath the caravan so that set out kind of my distances between rafters which unfortunately was a little bit over four foot, which has meant that these, the, the distance between each rafter is sometimes under two foot, but quite often over two foot, which means it's not gonna work out well for my boards. Now, it's only a caravan, and I don't wanna be spending stacks of money more than I need to. So I am, I would normally cut the rafter to finish, uh, sorry, cut the board to finish on a rafter. In this instance, I'm not going to do it, I don't want to waste any board. So I've just been putting some noggins or dwangs in between where where the board finishes beyond a rafter. So there's a rafter, board finishes halfway, and two dwangs that'll give me enough support. So then I'm just going to work my way along, straight line, and then whatever the offcut is at that end. I'll start again, come back the other way. Uh, a couple of things to get over. This is the flue for the for the gas boiler. So I'm gonna have to work my way around that. Uh, it all comes apart. There's a there's a collar, like a rain shield collar here, which I'm gonna this comes off, this comes off, then I'm gonna cut round this part which doesn't come off, and then hopefully slip everything back down inside. And when I felt all this, that will all become watertight. Uh, the flue for the wood burner at the other end, different story. None of that's coming out. So I've got to cut around that and then make a watertight seal with the roofing felt when, uh, when we get to that stage. So, beautiful day for it. You can see just up, uh, yeah, up in the distance up there. Go right up, right up there. Oh, it's in focus on my finger instead. Oh well. Anyway, that's Ben Crooken. Beautiful day. It's been snowed quite a lot today. Just in sort of lengthy flurries, but nothing, nothing enough to cause a problem. It's been a very pleasant day. So I'm going to crack on. This one's made me scratch my head a little bit. This is the flue from the from the boiler. We've got a, a combi boiler that heats the hot water and does radiators in the caravan. Don't use it for heating, we use a wood burner, but so this uh, this just pulls off. And then this collar comes off. But not only does the gas um, emissions come up through through the pipe. This is an air inlet for air to go back in. 
So you can't just, uh, I can't just poke it through the board and seal it up to stop the water going in because air's got to get into it. So, uh, and when this board sits over, it's going to come to about here, so there won't be any room for that to go on and, and displace the water. So the only thing I think I can do is I've got to extend. I've got to extend the pipes. I'm going to have to extend this one so that that and this has something to fit to. I'm also going to have to extend this outer to a point above here so I can seal around it. But then when that goes back on, there's still air can go into it. Let me just show you. See, see the gas comes out of there, the gas exhaust, and then air goes into there. If, you, if it was light enough down there, you could see into the cupboard that the boiler is in. So it's, it's doing two jobs. So what I've done is I've found, I found a sheet of very thin metal. This stuff, it's quite thin and flexible. So I figure I need to raise, raise this up about five and a half inches to get it to a point where I can get it on. Uh, but it's got to go inside that and be screwed in, so I've added a couple of extra. So I've cut, I've cut a piece seven and a half inches that way. So I've just kind of, just gently putting a bit of a bend into it to make it into a tube. And then I'm going to drill a couple of holes through and make that into a tube, and then that will sit down inside. Well, not very big, but that will sit inside that, like that. Then I can screw through here. That will go down over the top of that. That will then sit on top. That can all be fixed together with little screws. And then I've got to do a similar thing here. I'm going to have to build a another tube. Again, same height, because I want to extend both pieces by the same amount. So I'll obviously this one will have to be longer. And hopefully that will do the trick. So uh, I'll show you my progress shortly. I don't have a pop rivet, I've already pop rivets, which is a good enough reason not to do that. So instead, I'm going to add some little half inch screws, which I think will do the job quite nicely. It's not like it's got to be a perfect seal, it's just got to get rid of the gas exhaust. the air in so the two will mingle in the current system.
to um, I'm going to screw in through this into this as well but I'm inclined to make this a little bit bigger because it's a little bit loose in there so uh, that's not a big problem I'll just take those out one of the advantages of screws over pop rates always leave yourself room to make mistakes So now the plan is that that I'll put my uh, water over the top. It's going to be a slightly loose fit on there, but I'm going to again. I can put a drill just through. It's just on the edge of the old pipe there. I can put a, a fix it through there. Top of that again. I can put another. do is cut another seven inch seven and a half inch strip off of my piece of steel well it's not even steel it's uh, well, I don't know I guess it must be must be thin aluminium I guess uh, I get some rough idea of what the circumference is roughly it's roughly seven 725, 750, something like that. So, I'll cut a strip that long, seven and a half inches wide. Just clear the decks a bit. Would have been nice to cut it across the across there but that's only I think it's about 600 wide yeah 610 two foot wide that piece so it's not not long enough that way so I'm gonna cut a, I'm gonna cut a seven and a half inch strip off the whole length piece of uh, metal was actually it was actually in the caravan it's uh, it was behind the 
the gas fire. I guess it was the protective layer for the wall behind the, the gas fire that was in here, but we took that out. The gas fire came out to be replaced with a wood burner. So it's funny how the putting the wood burner in has provided me with the metal I need for converting this bit. So that's uh, handy. It's got some staples in it. Right, it's connected to the I guess. Get out. I just imagine this is quite boring for a lot of people to watch this. I guess if you're bored you won't be looking at it anyway, but it might just be very handy for somebody who's deciding to do this kind of project. So now we'll have a look at get some idea how round it's gonna be. So what will happen now is that I can fix that to that and that will give me a lip to seal round when the board goes over. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that, I think it's going to work nicely. Let's try and get a bit of a, try and get a bit of a curve. Can't go too mad, otherwise you end up creasing it. That will have put, uh, let's put some curve into it at least. If we roll up the other one from the other end. Plenty of overlap. I do the same thing as before, I just drill, drill three holes, fix it. Fix it somewhere near and then adjust it if I need to. song. Can't see it but I think it was a wren. Tiny little bird. I think they're the smallest in the UK aren't they? The wren. Uh, but they make so much noise. How's that looking? Get it, it'd be quite nice to have a decent fit. Probably so. Yeah, the problem is I've got a screw at the bottom that needs to come out. That's fouling on the pipe work. I think I'll be able to take that out, put that back on, and then I'll use that other to fix it into place. Any final place that should. It's tight, but I want it to be tight. That's gone on there, great, that's lovely. It really has gone on there a treat. Yeah, right, on the original, 
slight difference between the two, which I'm going to try and copy, is uh, about three and a half inches. Whew. About there. Uh, that through there. show you. <coughs> yeah, so there you go, you can see I've it's pretty much copied what was already there. The only difference being this one, this one's gone inside that and this one's gone outside. That means any any uh, anything that comes out should come out nicely. Air can still go in. And any water that lands on here is going to drip off. So, same as where they've sealed this around the caravan, I'm going to seal this one around the top of the board. So the next thing to do is to get the board in place over the top of that, and then see if we can get everything to fit and leave enough room for the uh, for the air to get in, and enough enough room for us to seal against water getting in. So I'll do that next. Now, because I've had to extend this pipe by putting that inside the one below, this is a too loose a fit over that. So what I'm going to do is fix that to that, pop a couple of screws in there, and the whole thing can sit over. And then I can fix through this hole into there and that'll all hold it in place. And then I'll, when I felt the roof I can seal around that and I'll bring the, bring the felt up around here. That'll be sealed lovely then. That's great. Really pleased with that. So here you go, if you need to extend Flue. A couple of bits of thin metal, a few screws, a pair of metal shears, and about 20 minutes mucking about. And a little thing that's worth pointing out. Excuse Martin Offler shouting away over in the corner there. Um, around the, this is a double insulated twin wall flue, uh, flue pipe from the wood burner. Now, they really don't get on with fires on, and these really don't get warm on the outside, but the regulation is that you have to have two inches all around it clear. So, what I've done is I've put two dwangs, I'm still not sure that's the right word. Still not sure I'm being wound up about that. If anybody knows whether a Scottish noggin is called a dwang, please let me know. And I'm going to fill the space up with vermiculite, which is like a expanded rock, very light. Works as an insulation and it's fireproof. So I'm just going to put that around in just in that section. Then there'll be land, uh, sheep's wool either side. So that's a, a point that's worth noting. <laughs> Folks, I'm, uh, I'm at the process of editing the video and so I've jumped forward a bit in time as you can see. Um, I, I'm aware that the video is getting rather long. So I wanted to just show you, obviously I finished boarding it, I got the bottom layer of felt on and then I've clearly felted, I've put the top coat on. I've not got any footage of that but 
it's it's pretty straightforward you know if you're going to felt it uh, with a roofing torch uh, torch on roofing felt it's pretty straightforward but i think the thing that is interesting or quite useful information is how the flashings get cut around the edges so i'm going to leave you with some some footage of cutting those those parts um, you can see that the felting all around the bottom of the flues is done um, uh, the only other thing left to do is to finish off these vent covers the vent the, these had kind of a plastic dome over the top these are the, this is the vent for the shower the one in the kitchen is the same um, uh, the, the, the covers were so brittle that they broke when I took them off so I've got to, I've got to make something to cover them over but I've just built a, a little I cut the hole out the same size as the vent and put a two by two frame around there just to lift it up here so that I've got something to seal against with with the felt and keep the water off from running in so apart from making some covers for them uh, we're kind of done up here so the the job did slow down a little and some of you will know subscribers will know that um, listed in our previous video my, uh, the poor axe lady has suffered a bit of a nasty injury and is out of action at the moment so my priority on jobs has changed um, I'm having to spend a lot of time with her at the moment and helping her just get through the day so we're just doing the essential works at the moment and now this is watertight that's uh, that's a good step forward um, and I'll be detailing the in the next video part three I'll be looking at the cladding and the insulating and, and the deck and some um, another thing which is uh, really quite interesting I've only just found out about which is um, a friend uh, Roy Villanis um, he told me about this it's called uh, a Japanese uh, wood preservation technique called Shoshugi Ban and uh, I've had a go at it and it basically it transforms a piece of wood like this into a piece of wood like that and it's uh, done with a with a roofing torch again and um, a little bit of elbow grease so that'll be part of the next video so I'll leave you with leave you with the details and cutting the flashings and thanks for watching and please uh, give us a thumbs up maybe and subscribe and tell your friends bye for now So this is how I cut the flashings. This is how I was shown to do it by my mate Simon Griggs back down in Essex. He's been flat roofing for oh, must be 70, 80 years now. <laughs> anyway, so I want these flashings to be 10 inches long, which is three inches down, three inches back up, four inches onto the roof. So this level's two and a half inches wide, so I'm gonna measure that seven and a half inches from the edge and cut on the other side. It's just easier to measure that side of the level and cut this side. Hook blade, obviously. Now these ones I want to be running from left to right, rising from left to right. So I want the I want the lap to be above. So the the black strip's got to be on the right hand side as you do this. So now I'm marking three inches. Just use a trowel to mark that there. At each end, three inches there. And I'm just gonna this board's not really quite wide enough. I'm just going to score a, a gentle line. Obviously, you don't want to go through it. Just go a gentle, dual, score a gentle line, and then fold it on that line. You will try and be as accurate as you can, really. Both measuring, cutting, and folding. Otherwise, you just end up with edges not meeting, and it's, it'll still be waterproof, but it just won't look as nice. So that's a three inch. Um, that's going to be now to the edge of the roof on the on the drip and then you just fold that again that gives you your other three inch 
And if you cut everything right, that leaves you four inches there. If you pre-fold it, especially on a lovely day of day where the sun's out and it's a bit warm, they just hold their shape. It's tricky, clever bit, I think, is the bit you cut out on the end, the bare end. You cut this shape out along the edge of that black line. You cut through there, and then you cut through there take that shape out so you end up with that what that means is when you hang that down and you put the next one in alongside it I'll show you I've done one already see this one went on first this one here there's the bit that's cut out there's that shape and it means when you hang the next one in which is this one here that's going to come up and over like that. And then when you do the second one, if you don't cut that piece out, it gets really thick and heavy here. And then what happens is when you bring the two edges over the top, they don't line up along this edge. They don't meet because you've got that double thickness. So you cut that corner out and it does away with that. So, thank you, Mr. Griggs. I know you're the professional, and I am but the amateur. But you taught me well. Hopefully you can see there now, with that that cutout that I was talking about, it means that when you pull when you pull this one over, they end up bang in line with each other. As long as you're really careful when you do the fold that you fold it in exactly the right spot, you know, right on the crease that you've made when you uh, cut them in the first place. Doesn't work out spot on every time, but that's due to my incompetence rather than the method. But of course this edge all gets covered up because the uh, because the, the fall of the roof is going this way and the rain's going to fall off and over the main uh, felt on the roof the top coat will go over lap over the top of that uh, if it was an edge with an aris rail that goes up so you want to keep the water on and roll away then you'd 
you'd put your main coat, main top sheet on and then bring the flashing over the top. But in this instance, the flashing edge gets covered up. So although it's lovely and neat just there, it will get covered.